Welcome to this print on demand only Q&A of the top 15 questions. Hopefully I can get through all of them. I made a post on the community saying the first 15 people to ask a question will get it answered, providing that the questions actually make any sense. And that is exactly what I'm going to discuss in this video. So again, this is only print on demand related questions, nothing else. And before I get right into it, I've got all the questions over here on my trusty iPad. Let me just quickly say, if you haven't already subscribed or if you're new here, my name is Shui Morris. I make videos on print on demand, Amazon FBA, business, YouTube, anything that's affiliate marketing, you know, I'm just trying to help everyone make a bit of money online. So if you haven't subscribed, hit that subscribe button, just just, just hit it and uh, let's get on with the video. So question number one is, what's the copyright law? Oh, and by the way, if I can't answer these questions, I'll tell you straight out, like I don't know the answer because I, I don't know the answer to every single question. I'll just try my best here. So question number one, what is, What's the copyright law on using a celebrity's face or using a quote they have said in a film or real life? It's a great question. I would never use a celebrity's face, okay? Even if the copyright laws behind it are a bit iffy, just don't do it, it's not worth it. In terms of using movie quotes, again, I probably wouldn't do that. Uh, but in terms of using real life quotes, probably don't mind using real life quotes. I, I, out of the three of those options, the celebrity's face, the movie quotes, or the live quotes, I would be most okay using live quotes, but I certainly wouldn't use faces or movie quotes. All right, next question. What should you do if you be making many good designs but are still getting no sales even after many months of uploading more and more designs? Do you just keep going? Carmen, I feel your pain. Okay, it's really, really hard. Print on demand is not easy. It can take months and months and months. There's no there's no specific time frame on how long it will take to be successful with this. It could take you a month, it could take you six months. So the question you've got here is, do you keep going? Do you add more designs? Well, yes. If you are truly passionate about print on demand and you actually enjoy the process, then keep uploading designs, keep pushing through, and hopefully one day you'll start seeing a return, right? For example, this YouTube channel is a brilliant example. Four years it took me to start getting, you know, a couple of thousand views per video and, and all of these kind of things. So it takes a lot of hard work, a lot of persistence to actually, you know, pay off. So yes, continue going, but only continue going if you're enjoying the process. If you're hating the process, then move on because print on demand is not for you if you're hating the process. All right, next question. How do you optimize paid ad traffic directed to print on demand sites? And when do you know it's time to cancel an ad that's not working well? Great content, by the way. Well, thank you, Shane. I appreciate the kind words. That's a great question. When do you cancel an ad that's not working well and how do you optimize paid traffic? Well, I don't know if you've seen my video about my five by five by five method where, you know, five ads, five dollars each, five interests. In terms of knowing how much money to put into an ad and how to optimize it, well, you optimize it based on the niche. So, and based on the t-shirt. So however targeted the t-shirt is, that is how you can optimize your ad. If you've got a broad t-shirt, it's gonna be very hard for you to actually optimize your ad. Um, so base it on the niche that your t-shirt is actually directed towards. And in terms of, you said, when do you know it's time to cancel an ad? Well, if you are so solely focusing on, ad, on ads and you're not trying any free methods, then if you make, if you, if you have like $25, I usually say $25 is a good test, but if you've spent $25 on ad and you still haven't made a single sale and you can see people have clicked your ad and gone to the sales page and they haven't bought, that is an indication for me that I would move on either with a new ad or with an entire new design and a new everything. Next question, Ahmed. Thanks, Shimmy. My question, the best social media sites for organic promotion. I think nowadays in 2020, um, I would say the two best sites for print on demand in particular is probably Pinterest and Instagram. If you're talking about other com other kind of jobs, then you know I would delve into YouTube and Facebook. But at the moment we're just talking about print on demand and the best free traffic sites. And I would say just posting on Pinterest, posting on Instagram is probably the best the best platforms to do so on. Okay, Dominic, this is a super long question. How does the customer service side work with everything being so well automated and integrated in sites like Amazon and Redbubble? This one rarely gets talked about, but I would like to know what kind of tasks you would expect to be doing, how frequently since, oh gosh, there's a read more section as well. 
Since we don't live in a perfect world, I'm sure occasionally we'll have to apologize for a packaging being late or item too small, but I can't picture the full customer service picture in this business, you know, before you can afford the virtual assistant. Okay, Dominic, it's a good question. It, I feel like you're basically just asking what tasks are involved for, for, for me and you and what the company does. And this all depends on which print on demand company you use. For example, if you use somewhere like Redbubble or Teespring, they handle everything. So if you, if I have my t-shirts on Redbubble and you as a customer buy my t-shirts, Redbubble will email you, Redbubble will sort out the shipping. If you have any issues regarding the shipping, the quality, anything, you message Redbubble. I am just the guy uploading designs. I have absolutely no say in the customer service side of it. I've got nothing to do with that. I'm just uploading designs. Now, if you are opting in to create your own website on Shopify and doing it like that, then you might want to take a, a bigger grasp on the customer service aspect, you know, email your customers and if they have any issues, refund them or speak to them or whatever. But if you, like I said, if you're using a platform that does it all for you, like Teespring or Redbubble or Merch by Amazon, then you don't really have to worry, you just have to upload designs. Okay. I am a graphic designer and I want to do print on demand as a side hustle. Should I focus on text-based designs or cool intricate designs? Which type people like to wear the most? Well, actually I've got a video coming out that you're absolutely going to love. And it's called, let me have a look. Um, it's the three different ways to get into print on demand. And you've just named two of the ways, right? I'm not going to ruin that video, but it's completely up to you whether or not you want to you know, focus on, like you said, text-based designs, or if you want to go for in intricate designs, if you focus on text-based designs, they'll probably be a lot more niche specific, they'll be a lot easier to sell. However, you might get, as, a, as you are a graphic designer, you might get a lot more out of creating beautiful pieces of artwork that you're putting on t-shirts, and then you can use platforms like Instagram and Pinterest to, you know, generate traffic. So it's completely up to you. I would say pick one that you find more enjoyable. And if you don't know which one is more enjoyable, then try both for, like try one for two weeks, another one for two weeks, whichever one is more enjoyable, then go for that one. First of all, hi, how are you? Okay, here's my question. I'm great, thank you. Um, what is, oh, there's a, oh, there's, oh gosh, that's another long question. What's the best way to research safe tags? I've been using tmhunt.com, but technically this only reveals safe trademarks. Are trademarks the same as copyrighted tags? The copyright applies to trademark. The copyright applied to trademarks. Will this be an issue in titles, tags, descriptions, or all of the above? All my designs are original, but literally words like alpha, cat, and pink are shown as live text trademarks on TM Hunt. Therefore, implying that they may not be safe bet. Your thoughts on TM Hunt? Can you suggest any alternatives? Can you shine light on the difference between copyright tags, trademarks? Great question. Um, firstly, I've never used this website before, so I have no idea. I'm not gonna just lie that I've, I say that I've used it. I don't even know what it is. What I will say though, is you don't really have to worry so much about copyright in terms of on your tags and your title. All, all that you have to know is like, you can't have copyright on your t-shirt, but, and this is a big but, if you have a t-shirt that doesn't break any copyright rules, but in your title, you're saying things like, you know, Batman versus Superman t-shirt, even though if the t-shirt is not breaking any copyright rules, that title, if it's on Redbubble, may be flagged because they'll assume the t-shirt is also breaking copyright rules. So based on that title, your t-shirt may get flagged and taken down. So I, I wouldn't worry about words like cat or alpha or pink, but I would say, you know, if you're going for copyrighted terms like movie characters and things like that, avoid that in the tags and the title. But if you just got like a a cool t-shirt that isn't copyright issues, then yeah, go for whatever title you want. You can say the, 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 this cat was, this alpha cat had a pink coat. You know, that's gonna be absolutely fine. I don't see any issues with that. And same with the tags. After increasing the trust score, can I get organic sales in Teespring? This is a good question. I've even created a video on this question. It's very, very hard to, to answer this question because the, the trust score and the, uh, what is it called again? I always forget what it's called. The um, the trust score and the boosted network on Teespring is just a massive unknown. It's a mystery. No one really knows what's going on there. No one knows anything about it. So I don't know. I don't. I don't know if you're going to get more organic sales if you increase your trust score. Like, and no one knows that. And anyone who tells you the answer and says they know it, they're lying to you because no one does know it except for Teespring, and they're not sharing. All right, I've got quite a few more questions here. I wanna see if I can get them all done within 15 minutes. Um, I don't want this video to drone on for too long. 
Um, which print on demand company do you prefer and why? Printful, this is new, Printify. Oh. I ignore that last bit. Which company do you prefer and why? Um, I'm starting to like Redbubble a lot. I know I never used to like it. My favorite was always Teespring, but Teespring have gotten a bit selfish and weird and their customer service is a bit bad. And then I went into Redbubble. I do like Redbubble. I'm just not a fan of their shipping times. I'm not a fan of their customer service a bit. And then there's always Merch by Amazon. I think Merch by Amazon would be my ultimate if I had to pick just because Amazon's customer service people is the best. Like, I have a whole business on Amazon, so I really feel like Amazon would be the best. And uh, if I had to pick one, if I was on a desert island and I could only take one print-on-demand company with me, then I would pick, um, I'd pick Amazon. Okay, I have seen you talk about Teespring's marketing is not very effective. Why is that? Is it your personal experience on their marketing is bad or in general? Even after getting a trust score, I discovered about print on demand about a month ago and I've uploaded 200 ads available and now I want to head towards Teespring. But if their marketing is ineffective, even after getting a trust score, then what's the point? Hence, I want to know. Okay, so Mar a Teespring's own marketing. Um, again, if, if, right, is this my personal experience? All of these videos are my personal experience. Every YouTuber who posts a video about anything, it's just their personal experience, okay? No one is telling you the magic source that will work for everyone. If person A is getting a lot of sales from Teespring's market self, like their marketing, it doesn't mean you're going to, okay? So yes, I, I, haven't, um, I haven't taken advantage of Teespring's, uh, um, their own organic marketing. I've always done ads to my Teespring t-shirts and got sales of that way. From what I have seen, and, and I have actually tried with Teespring marketing, I feel like it's very, very difficult. Um, getting a trust score is like, no one knows about trust score. They're so secretive about it. So it doesn't make me trust them very much, ironically. And then in terms of hearing what other people have to say about, you know, getting on Teespring's boosted network and building up a trust score and getting organic sales, a lot of people say no. I mean, I would say the majority of people who I talk to actually say it's rubbish compared to the tiny few people who say it's actually any good. And then you've also asked, um, you want to head towards Teespring. I would say, look, I would say if you want to go towards Teespring and upload all these 200 designs there, then do so. There's no harm in doing so, okay? If you get two sales, you get two sales. It, the only harm in it is it takes you a couple of hours to do it, but it, it's obviously going to be worth it because you're spreading yourself over multiple websites. I would say apply for Merch by Amazon if you've got 200 designs ready to go. And that way, over time, you can slowly build your way up the tiers in Merch by Amazon and upload eventually all your 200 designs because they do have good free organic marketing. Hello, Shimmy, how are you? I'm still great, thanks for asking. First of all, uh, what's another long, oh, it's not. First of all, I want to thank you for the very useful information that you've provided to us. You're so welcome. Secondly, please explain to us some of the websites that can help take, help us make advertisements on the pages of famous personalities found on many platforms through certain amounts. I'm so sorry, I don't understand your question one bit. Please explain to us some of the websites that help us make advertisements on the pages of famous personalities found on many platforms through certain amounts. I don't understand what you're asking. I will just assume you're asking, are there any websites that you're able to make ads on celebrities pages or something? So in that case, I would say just go towards Facebook because celebrities have Facebook pages and you can create ads where people like certain pages and you can also pick certain amounts of money you want to spend. I think that's what you're asking. I'm, I'm, I don't really understand, I'm sorry. Right, moving on. Okay, so I am planning on starting a print-on-demand business. So which platform should I use? Redbubble, Teespring, Printful, Etsy. Can you please tell me the pros and cons? Well, instead of answering this question, because this is like an entire video, and it is an entire video, which I have made, you can click the link up there to go and check out that video. It's pretty much all the print-on-demand websites compared to each other. I know I have missed a good 20 of them, and there is a part two to that video coming out, but I think that will be the answer that you're looking for, so definitely go and check that out. And uh, got a couple more questions, three more questions. I'm looking for print quality and actual product reviews from the big printers. I want to share realistic reviews with customers. Good for you. I don't know if that was a question. Keep, keep looking. I hope you find it. I don't really understand the question there. If you're asking me which one has the best print quality, it completely depends on which style you go for. If you go for just the generic basic T, then it's going to be that. If you go for the premium quality, it's going to be that. It depends. Redbubble do seem to have reviews on their individual designs, which I think is very good. Okay, I have followed all your Instagram strategy, but since two weeks ago, still have not received any sales yet. Please suggest how I can boost my t-shirt sales. How long has it been, did you say? Two weeks. Okay, two weeks is nothing. Come on, two weeks. 
It can take people two weeks just to come up with a design. Print on demand, is, especially if you're doing free Instagram um, um, method, two weeks is nothing. I mean, answer me this. How many followers do you have on Instagram? How many likes you're post getting? How many people are viewing your stories? I mean, it doesn't matter if you've been on Instagram for six months. If no one's looking at you, then you're not going to get any sales. All right. So um, firstly, you've got to wait longer than two weeks. Secondly, don't focus on the sales. Focus on the enjoyment of building the company. And thirdly, you're going to have to wait a bit longer. There's, if you want to just immediately boost your sales, then invest in some advertising. But if you don't want to spend any money, then you have to go organically. And then it is a slow game. You've got Redbubble for organically, Merch by Amazon for organically, you know, that kind of stuff. Right. Final question. Um, and this is the 15th question, I believe. Thoughts on Etsy ads? Okay, well, I'm going to be honest with you. I've only tried Etsy ads once. This was a long time ago and it wasn't for t-shirts. It was for um, it was for my photography because I am a photographer and I tried to sell my photos at one point. I tried. I'm going to stress the tried. Selling photos is not easy. But anyways, um, after speaking to Ryan um, on, on his YouTube channel, my YouTube channel, we did that collaboration, which you can check out up here. We spoke about Etsy in detail. We spoke about Etsy ads and from the vibe I was getting from him, I wouldn't invest in Etsy ads. They sound expensive um, and I don't think they're worth it. I would definitely suggest going onto Etsy and posting your products there for the organic search. People actually just trying to find your products through SEO tags, you know, keywords, but I wouldn't necessarily invest in Etsy ads. And also a big reason not to invest in Etsy ads is I don't know how big your profit margin is gonna be, right? I always say, if you're gonna invest in ads for your print-on-demand business, build a Shopify store, build your own website. I don't ever see the point in sending your own paid traffic, right, to someone else's website. Why are you building up Etsy's website and making them more money by paying them for ads and sending traffic to them? It makes more sense to pay for traffic and send them to your own website, and that way your own website is starting to get bigger and bigger and bigger. Okay, and that's another thing that's gonna be discussed in a video in a couple days time. That's gonna be a really, really good video. So I hope you like this. Now look, I do have a whole bunch more questions. Oh, actually I don't, I've got one, two, three, four, five, five more questions. So maybe I'll do a part two. If you want to see a part two, I'll leave another uh, post in the community section asking for the next first 15 people. Uh, let me know in the comments if you wanna see that. And again, thank you so, so much for watching this video. I really, really appreciate it. I hope you liked it. And uh, if you haven't smashed that like button, just give it a little tap and I'll see you in the next video.